Yo, what is going on everyone? I'm back at you here with another brief car review. And I'm sorry it's been a while since I've last uploaded. You know, with everything going on, it's just been a little difficult to get my hands on some cars. But, guess what? We are back, baby! Right now, I'm in the brand new 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500 LT. And, as usual, I'm going to walk here around this car, show you the inside and outside, do a little test drive. And I'll even do a 0 to 60 test and a 60 to 100 test. You know, everything you guys want to see. So first things first, this is obviously a beautiful truck. From its completely redesigned exterior to the elegant Summit white color option. Uh, the Silverados do start at an MSRP of 28.5 with standard features, which we will get to in just a minute. These are the 18 inch bright silver painted aluminum wheels, which are a $300 extra option i believe i do like them a lot better than the standard 17 inch ones this particular model though however happens to be the 1500 lt which you can see in the back there uh four wheel drive standard bed and it costs just over forty one thousand dollars you can configure the 1500 lt with three different engine size options such as the 2.7 liter turbo the 5.3 liter v8 and the 3.0 liter turbo diesel duramax this particular model is equipped with the 5.3 liter v8 engine which pushes about 355 horsepower and 383 foot pounds of torque as we rudely get interrupted by this fire truck so and real quick uh if you're thinking about getting a silverado definitely go with the v8 option it doesn't get the best gas mileage it only 16 miles per gallon in the city in 2021 22 on the highway but you'll be disappointed if you don't so and as we climb in you can see this has the same borderline boring interior of a chevy car uh gm just hasn't really seemed to figure out the interior design part but i guess what they lack in the interior they make up for in uh, power but when you add a lot of power, you also need a lot of fuel, and this thing definitely takes a lot of it, so. There aren't too many buttons. Um, they still made it look pretty decent with the minimalistic approach. Here is the standard 7-inch infotainment touchscreen. Uh, you see that it obviously has a Bluetooth capability with Apple CarPlay. Um, you do get the basic standard setting features as well. Uh, you even get a teen mode and a valet mode that you put in a code for, which is pretty neat. Down here is your climate control clusters with fan speed over here to the left and temperature control to the right, very basic. Here are your defrosters. Down here, you've got your auto start and stop, which I always like to keep off. Your four-way hazards, your traction control, and this uh, master window button, which puts down all the windows at once. Over here, only the driver's window is fully automatic, while all the other ones are half automatic. Meaning that they go down with one touch, but you have to hold them to come back up. Up here, you've got your interior lighting switches. Down here, you've got a USB port and a 12 volt battery charger. There's a USB-C there as well. And here's your center console, which is pretty roomy, I guess, but not too deep. 
but you've also got all this extra space in these compartments like this one and your glove box so not not a ton of space so a decent amount of space now over to the steering wheel functions you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of things that catch your eye in all honesty but You've got a bunch of viewable options, such as your brake pad life, which I've actually never seen before. It's pretty cool. Your air filter life, tire pressure, oil life, fuel range, and your trips. And you can customize that to display whatever you want. I prefer speed or MPG. You can also change the units to read in metric if you're into that sort of thing. Over to the left on top there is how you can toggle between the different driving modes such as normal sport and off-road. I will be doing the 0-60 to test in sport mode by the way. Down here is where you would change the truck to four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. You just have to be in park or neutral. And this doesn't take long at all for it to uh, change or engage. Only about four to five seconds, really. There you go. Not too bad. You've also got your cargo lamp button and brightness adjusting buttons right here. Below that is your parking brake, which is enabled by holding this button down as I continue to press it in. <laughs> the parking indicator will pop up once it is engaged. There you go. This is obviously the window lock. And above that is the mirror controls. Again, with Chevy interior, you're not really going to get anything that surprises you all that much. Now let's give it a few revs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Doesn't sound bad at all. It's that V8, baby. Now let's have a look under the hood really quick. And one more thing I actually like about this truck is the low clearance to get in and out. Um, you don't need to jump in. You don't need to jump up or down like you would in a Dodge Ram for say. There you go. Not too bad. Really a good looking truck from all angles, huh? Now on to one of my least favorite things about this truck, which is the rear seats. So I'm five foot 10 and I barely have any leg room in the back here. This is comparable to the Ram 1500 leg room space, I guess. But this is also much, much smaller than the amount of leg room you get in the Ford F-150s in the rear seats. However, the Silverados do have the most amount of headroom out of all these three vehicles, so in the back at least. I guess these back seats are somewhat comfortable uh, if you're not a very big or tall person, I guess. You obviously can't recline the rear seat at all, so yeah, you know. Like I said, you don't get the best gas mileage in these trucks. And it does take a lot of gas considering it's massive 24 gallon tank. Now on to the bed. It is the, this is the standard size bed, which is around six feet long and comes up to my lower hip just about. And again, I'm five foot 10. The max payload in this bed is a little over 2000 pounds. And the max towing capacity is uh, 9,600 pounds. 
which is actually the most out of all the three competitors. All in all, this is a this is a really really good looking pickup truck. I mean, nothing too special or different, but there is still one thing that we still have to do, right? Give this baby a test drive. So I wouldn't say this is a nimble truck, but you can definitely throw this thing around corners pretty confidently. If I had to compare it to the Ram and the F-150, this would be right in the middle of both of them in terms of uh, how easy it is to drive. With obviously the Ford being the easiest of them to drive and the Ram feeling the most like a big pickup truck. I would say the F-150 drives more like a big SUV and the Ram, you know, really, really feels like a big pickup truck. Uh, the Silverado is basically a less comfortable Chevy Tahoe, actually. As a matter of fact, I would say this is the least comfortable out of all those three. And yes, I have driven all of them in the past. Honest reviews coming soon. Uh, here you'll see me doing a 60 to 100 test real quick. Which is not very difficult with this big V8 engine. Very, very impressive. And now let's do a zero to 60 test. Not bad at all for a big pickup truck. Let's try this one again. Definitely not bad. Now, when you're just driving this around town, you're going to get a ton of body roll and a little bit of steering wheel play here and there. But in all honesty, this thing's not bad at all. It goes wherever you want it to go. It's not the most comfortable, luxurious pickup truck, but it can easily get the job done. This has also been ranked as the most reliable out of the big three competitors. Uh, outlasting the F-150 actually by just a little bit so and the automatic 6-speed transmission in here which I'm actually not sure if it's an Allison transmission is uh, set to be one of the most reliable transmissions in a pickup truck today so I would say if you're a Chevy guy all the way you will love this truck uh, not only is it very reliable but it also performs very well in terms of uh, towing and payload capability and it flat out just looks really really good and it costs, uh, it also costs about the same as the, um, as an equally loaded, you know, competitor truck, so. And that's going to do it for this review, everyone. I want to say thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this review and would like to see more, please comment down below what you would like to see next. And hit the subscribe button if you could. I really want to grow this channel and your opinion really does help me out a lot, so. It's also free to subscribe, so who cares? Just do it. <laughs> thank you, thank you all so much. Have a great day and stay safe, everyone.